Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Sugar Mama's Fireplay podcast. I am financial planner, Canna Campbell. So today's podcast, I want to talk to you about Frugal February. My results are in. And if you follow me on social media, you will also know that I'd like to call this fucking Frugal February because it went disastrously wrong and backfired. In fact, I feel like I'm a little bit of a crossroad with Frugal February. I'm really questioning the longevity of Frugal February, whether it serves us, whether it's authentic to what I stand for, and whether we really have out, all outgrown Frugal February. So if you're listening to this and you think, oh, I need to, kind of needs to hear what I think, or I think this is the future of Frugal February, or I've got an idea for you around Frugal February, please, please, please shoot me through a message on Instagram and let me know what you think, because... I, I don't know what to do and um, and apologies in advance if this sounds like a counseling session with Canna Campbell, but uh, you'll, you'll understand why when I tell you about what, what went wrong. All right. So first of all, I want to remind you that with my podcast, you can listen to it on all the major platforms. However, if you ever want to watch me do my po po uh, podcast, you can always do so now on YouTube because I publish on YouTube as well as on all the major platforms the podcast. Now, how did I go in frugal February? Even with all the disasters, which I will elaborate on in a second, I still managed to save in my frugal February account, which is my thousand dollar project account, $1,074. Now I had high hopes of saving a thousand dollars. So, but, and I didn't want to give myself a goal as such, because I was worried that if I achieved that goal, I would stop and stop trying. But I actually cracked the thousand dollars and I exceeded a thousand dollars. So that $1,074 will be invested in the $1,000 project going towards my diversified share portfolio of long-term growing passive income. And for you guys wondering, what am I going to invest? Which stocks? I'm going to be investing this money into a listed investment company because for me, I really value a diverse diversification, particularly in a really volatile market. And I want to be buying stocks that are dividend paying stocks. So one of my favorite uh, listed investment companies is in my portfolio. I'll be adding more to it. I also managed to save in excess of this. You see, in our family account, even when I'm knowing that I'm about to do a $200 grocery shop, uh, I w we will still have $158 left over. Now, I normally run our family accounts to zero by the end of the month. I don't try and have money left over. I give myself spending boundaries. So, for example, like $500 per week on groceries and you know, um, uh, I, all our bills are rounded up. So I don't like, I, I pretty on top of our family living account. So from just being mindful with our money and being a little bit frugal, I actually have money left over on that. But also I managed to, with proactive long-term savings, I managed to save $80 per month. So I called up our electricity and gas provider, which happens to be origin energy. And I asked them if there was any better deals out there and they were able to switch plans and we were able to save $35 per month on our electricity bill and I think $15 per month on our gas bill. So there was an immediately a $50 savings. I am also contacting Foxtel and getting some of the services changed on our Foxtel account. And I also managed to do a few other little things which gave us the $80 per month saving. And for people out there going, so what, Canna? You saved, you've worked out, found $20 per week in savings for your family. Listen to this. If you take an average mortgage of $600,000 with an average interest rate of 5% on a 30 year term, which is what most people are on, that increase of $80 per month on a mortgage repayment saves over $32,000 in interest and one year and six months off your home loan. So it really does show you that those silly little like so what savings when you proactively and mindfully transfer them to something that serves your financial goals, they're incredibly valuable and incredibly powerful. Who would not want to save $32,000? And mind you, that is $32,000 with after tax savings. So if you think about how much you need to earn to be able to gain that money and imagine paying off your home loan 18 months earlier, that sounds pretty good to me. Now our mortgage is, in, is bigger than $600,000. So those numbers are only going to increase. And in fact, I'm pretty sure as I keep going with, with this, I'm pretty sure I'm going to find more than $100 per month uh, extra repayments, obviously keeping in mind interest rate rises, but I've used a 5% interest rate, which is higher than what we're currently paying. Now, how did I find these savings? Okay. 
everyone's got their own way of doing frugal fair breed. It really made me realize all these little things really do add up and about saying no sometimes and finding cheaper solutions. So this is what I did. I called up all of our utility providers. As I mentioned, I called Origin Energy. I even called Foxtel. I even called our mortgage broker. And our mortgage broker is amazing. And I, he, I said, Adam, are there any, like, can we get any more discounts? Can we ask for any better deals? Can we, is it worth refinancing to a different provider? And he reminded me that we only did this. Uh, we only got an amazing discount four months ago. Now, Yes, that was annoying going, we've used all our cards, clipped our ticket there and used up all our cards there. But it was actually quite peaceful because I was like, okay, great. We really have left no stone unturned. We are really looking at absolutely everything in our lives to try and save money here. So it was great to know that we are on the best deal possible. That was very satisfying. And other things we did was, you know, and as I said, before I say that, before I should say, you really, if, if you have a mortgage and you've never thought to refinance, make sure you go and listen to my podcast about the dangers of refinancing and the traps. But it is definitely a, a an area where you can save a huge amount of money if you're able to get a better interest rate, but stay on the same terms and conditions. That is the same time frame because you don't want to be constantly pushing forward uh, your home loan. And you obviously want to make sure that if you save fifty dollars per month with on your interest rate, make sure that's going towards your home loan and that you're not spending it somewhere else. Because when we find savings and free up money in our budget, it's very easy for it to be it to be evaporated and spent accidentally or intentionally somewhere else. We really want to make sure that these the, the hard work and the exhaustion of being frugal actually serves us with long term financial benefits. It's not about uh, you know, foregoing a manicure, pedicure to then go and spend an extra fifty dollars per month on clothes. I'd rather you go. Okay, well, I'm going to get not two manicure, pedicures a month. I'll get one, and I'll increase my mortgage repayment by fifty dollars per month. I want to make sure that you you being mindful with your money, you're being intentional with your money, you're being proactive with your money, and you actually can see and feel the benefits of those sacrifices, and you know that they're well, well worth it. The other thing. I did was I cut down on my snacking. I'm naughty. I like sweets. I like muffins. I like cupcakes. I like brownies. Um, and Frugal February stopped all of that. And I seeing how much those toxic, wasteful habits add up is a, I'm a little bit embarrassed and ashamed. The other thing I did was I ate up the bits. We would normally do a grocery shop every Sunday afternoon like a big sort of online one. And it, what I found myself doing was eating up the bits at home and trying, saying, look, can we try and stretch out these grocery shops? Can I have a go at doing it on Monday or Tuesday and see if we can make do with what we've already got before I go and do a big order? And that definitely helped. That helped a lot. And I talk about that $158 in our bank account, uh, our family account. That would actually be a bit more, but we had, I had to buy Apple um, a ballet outfit because she's just done ballet, which cost two hundred dollars. So, being you know, this kind of got evaporated by that. So, it's important that you always have a go, always get creative with being frugal because you'll be amazed as to how all these little savings add up and what you can actually do, which is well within your reach. The other thing was I looked to swap products, cheaper products. I would you know swap for home brand products, no frills products. One in particular was. I buy this, this Omo front loader washing powder. It's, it's expensive. It's probably one of the most expensive ones you can get. And I've always thought I have to buy that one because my skin is sensitive. But I it, it adds up to be quite a lot of money. And Michael Thompson from How Do You Afford That, my co-host, said to me, oh, apparently the Coles one is excellent. It's one of the best on the market and it's dirt cheap. So I thought, you know what, what a great opportunity to try this. So I bought it. It is outstanding. It's excellent. And it is so much cheaper. So it is worth, you know, shopping around, asking friends and family what products they use and what they recommend and, and reading reviews to see if you can find the same product, but much cheaper. And I also really embraced, uh, you know, zero waste products, things that you can reusable. So um, I have these baking sheets that are made of silicon. So I'm barely using baking powder, a uh, baking powder. I'm barely using baking paper. Um, using um, t really good quality Tupperware containers that I can u take use as snacks for on the go, like with yogurt and granola and frozen berries. You know, things, smart things that where you actually kind of, it sounds really cheesy, but feel really empowered to eat your snack that you've packed the day before because it looks really delicious and beautiful and you've made it with kindness and, and, and honoring your financial goals of, of trying to spend less. And the other thing, which was a great little tool, was uh, this thing called a vacuum seal. It's a Thermomix device, but it basically sucks out all of the air out of your Tupperware containers. So food lasts 
it stays fresh for so much longer so much so that it can last up to two weeks so again you're throwing less food out and wasting far less money um, the other thing I did was um, I forewent my monthly massage now before you think oh that's poor Canna she cut out her monthly massage for the record I get um, one month massage a month I get the early bird special which is 50% off this massage costs me $85 and it's great because it helps me really reset and recharge my batteries I get lots of ideas and inspiration while having a massage it works really well because I, I train three times a week and um, and I feel great afterwards now I forewent that and that was hard because I really do value that but again that $85 was quite satisfying transferring it to my frugal February account and I will admit it's not something I'll be giving up long term it, I honor it I respect it and I like that I go for an early bird special um, that I get 50% off for me it's a well worth investment in myself other little things was I said no to takeaway coffees we have coffee at home um, but I do every now and again when I'm running around like a headless chicken and feeling flat I might get, get myself a, a coffee to pet myself up again I don't really need to do it just carrying around a bottle of water and hydrating myself had the same effect uh, I also made use of free resources around us like taking my kids to our local libraries um, I took my girls to the art gallery of New South Wales which was spectacular by the way if you haven't gone there I highly recommend going it's free it's amazing it's beautiful it's it's just it's uh, that gallery is on like an international uh, level now and it's just it, it, the range of art is just absolutely mind-blowing so but and I made me feel feel how incredibly grateful we are to be able to have those resources and those amazing resources around us now I will admit I had a little bit of I guess a helping hand um, because during frugal February a spontaneous opportunity came up for me to go to Hong Kong now I armed and art whether I should be going on this trip because it was frugal February and I had put this manifestation out at the beginning of the year that I wanted an overseas holiday now I initially I, was, I felt really bad and I was like what do I do what do I do but then I thought to myself what would I say to someone that came up to me and said hey I'm doing frugal February but I've just been offered this opportunity to go to a overseas for the weekend or for a week and I would say to them immediately oh my god you're so lucky how amazing don't be stupid go for it embrace it so then as soon as I realized that I was like okay well I'm gonna go to Hong Kong now this is one of the beauties of having a holiday savings account because with when you have your holiday savings account you put money aside throughout the year for airfare accommodation activities and spending money so that you are, and you don't actually if you do this properly you don't touch your life account money whilst traveling and being on holiday so you could potentially be well, most people should come back with more money in their life account than what they left because they only they're using the money from a different source so I guess I had that blessing on my side for the three days I was in Hong Kong um, I wasn't using money from my life account so it was, it was able to I guess leave that money untouched and I was able to when I landed I was able to transfer some money to my frugal February account so that was a little a little help and obviously you know we were there for such a short period of time but being on a plane you can't spend money so that was great as well and there I, I should also disclose we were there on a work trip so I was able to freeload and sponge off Tom for a little bit in that like when we were out and about in taxis if we were going to a meeting obviously that's a work expense that was covered for, through the business and I myself did a little bit of business as well whilst I was there so I guess you know this is not rocket science I'm talking about there are lots of families that will you know if their partner has to travel a lot for work they will tag along a family holiday um, you know off the back of um, one of the person one of the family members you know being on holiday and it makes a lot of sense because it means one airfare is covered for by their employer or by their by their partner's business and you know all the part of the accommodation is covered and I have lots of friends who do this as well their, their partners have to fly into state for work uh, or overseas and they will grab the family members and you know bunker down into a hotel room and at least a, a significant portion of their trip is paid for their holiday is paid for so it makes a lot of sense now um, I would say frugal February I still always value and appreciate it. I still respect or respect it it's very very grounding it, it, it gives me a new it gives me appreciation of being able to spend and that fluidity of money and, and having a budget that you stick to and, and having those very healthy healthy boundaries in place that comes to a budget that allow for example 
a massage once a month. Allow for me to buy a new t-shirt if I need to buy a new t-shirt. Allow for me to buy an ASEA bowl because I love ASEA bowls. And I will admit I probably need to buy less of them because they made me realize how expensive they are and how they it can be wasteful. But it made me, because I had to say no to an ASEA bowl every time I walk past a Cali press or somewhere where they make it. It did make me, it makes me appreciate that I can when I'm not doing frugal February, I can say yes to them if I want, but I probably need to exercise more self-control. I really valued that, the, I guess, the refreshing, honest insight into my toxic habits. As I mentioned, I love muffins and cupcakes and brownies and banana bread and acia bowls. So it, it made me realize, okay, I, that's not healthy. That does not serve my financial goals in a positive way. Doesn't mean I need to cut them out completely, but it means I need to add a back a little bit more of a healthy respectful balance if I really want to achieve my financial goals this year which is investing at least twelve thousand dollars into the thousand dollar project and increasing the margin loan so it was it was it was good it was grounding it recalibrated me it was anchoring but I also felt that I had outgrown it if you've been following me for a long time you'll know that I'm actually not a frugal person as such I know how to be frugal I know how to rein it in when I need to I respect being frugal and it being frugal through various parts of my life, particularly when I was a single mother, is has helped me get to where I am today. So I will never disrespect my origins and, and, and the benefits of being frugal, but I'm also someone who's very much someone who has a mindset of abundance, prosperity, uh, gratitude, and I guess a limitless world. And I really do look at solutions, brainstorming, um, leaving no stone unturned, uh, I've got a great get up and go when it comes to a financial goal and giving it this biggest and best opportunity of being achieved, you know, and I, I'm happy with sacrifices because I know that they're well worth it. I'm also very much about, as I said, manifestation and I'm about, uh, you know, hard work and brainstorming and putting myself out there to, to, to really like shine and grow and hopefully inspire and educate and empower other people along the way that might be following along or watching from the sidelines. So for me, I felt, I feel a little bit torn between frugal February and manifesting March really. And it was really odd because there's some funny things actually manifesting things that actually kept on sprouting up during frugal February. But I want to share with you now what went wrong and why I would like to call frugal February this year fucking frugal February. This is what went wrong. I think it was maybe the day before frugal February had begun and I had Giuseppe to, to, I had to take Giuseppe to the vet. Now I knew in advance he had to have a tooth taken out. I was told it would be about $1,400 to maximum $2,000 and there may not even be as much as that. Within a couple of hours of Giuseppe being at the vets, um, I get a phone call and they said basically his teeth are so bad it's going to, he needs a lot of teeth taken out. And to cut a long story short, it was up to $8,000. Now, I take good care of my dogs. They get their checkups, they get their injections. I take care of Giuseppe's teeth. He's a 10 year old Labrador. Labrador's two things. Um, it, it's kind of part of the aging process, but they were really bad. Now, actually it turned out Giuseppe could, was so bad he could only get one half of his mouth done. The other half um, has to be done next month. Uh, so anyway, $8,000 basically. Ouch. But I'm like, okay, all right, we can, we've got emergency money. That's what it's there for. We can survive this. But then the next thing happened. Tom broke the garage door. He broke the garage door with my, with my car parked in the garage. We couldn't open the garage door. It was stuck. And we discovered this at Tuesday, Wednesday night. And I needed to get up early in the morning and do the school run. So I had to call an emergency gar garage person. They had to install a new motor two and a half thousand dollars now our garage motor was obviously had to be replaced but they said look have a look at your door and they showed me all the rust all the damage it, like it was it was literally falling apart they said look you're gonna have to buy a new garage door eventually and you do run the risk of this happening again but I was like okay how much is a new garage door five and a half thousand dollars so basically um, there we go another eight thousand um, dollars we're up for next up and this is the like the big one we had uh, an insurance claim submitted it's, we it submitted it six months ago and the initial insurance company were like yep yep that's fine it's covered when it came to the last minute the insurance company actually turned around and said actually we're really sorry we can't actually honor this because it actually boils down to maintenance even though they'd sat on it for six months i was like okay all right no problem I'll, I'll get my builders in to fix it now to give you a little bit of an insight into this um it was major water damage so basically our gutters had got blocked 
I don't know if this was malicious damage or not before we moved into the house, but it, it filled up with uh, pastrami ham wrapping and it caused so much blockage that the water had built up with pressure and built pushed into the inside of the house. So we had large amounts of black mold in our home. We had rotting beams. Um, we had um, like literally like water flooding into the center of our house. It was major. And when I got a builder over to come and have a look, he's like, "You, we need to rip out a window and it's a big window. It's a, a floor to ceiling window. We need to take out the beam. We need to replace the beam. We need to waterproof everything. We need to dry everything out. We." It, reseal everything put new gutters in it was not a cheap quote and i said to them look can we can we just do something like a quick fix here do we really have to do this he said look i can band-aid this but it's going to last between three months to a year and you won't know what damage is being done once that band-aid comes off and he said if i fix this you've got a guarantee for years i can't remember what, how many years it was like a, not a lifetime guarantee but something like 11 years he's like i would not let my house be in this condition and i could actually see physically with the damage it was bad and i i was like oh god we, we're going we we have no choice here we're dealing with mold we have to get on top of this quickly we've got a structural beam that's got to be taken out so anyway i'm like all right fuck like this is a big this is all our emergency money now gone and Tom had me to use Tom's separate special savings money that he had set aside um, a long time ago for something special for himself that he'd been saving up for. Gone. Wiped out just like that. And then, it, and I always say to people, you need to have emergency money. And, you know, I say work out that number and then imagine three big things happening simultaneously. And they say bad things sometimes happen in three. There was our big three. So I was like, Tom and I were both quite traumatized and shaken up by this because we were like, like how have we gotten so unlucky with this like like you know like this kind of we felt completely and utterly defeated defeated we were sucking our thumbs and we were like oh my god like what are we gonna do like you know tom, tom was a bit sad because he's like all this money i'd saved up and you know and i was concerned that oh, this wipes our emergency money we need to quickly rebuild it it then got worse we have a possum that lives in our roof we call him pete we hear him at night time and early in the morning he, I was finding these brown patches on our ceiling and I showed the builder and he had a look and he's like, uh, this possum has been de defecating in special spots and it's what that brown thing that you're seeing seeping through is, is the possum, Pete the possum. So we had to cut out parts of our ceiling to fix the damage that Pete the possum had been doing. So that just adds to the building cost, that quote's going up and up and up. And, and then, you know, things get getting damaged with the builders. Then the, the whole house to down to be repainted and the coat coming in for that. It, it's, it's coming in. And um, then our freezer dies. Now, not a big deal if freezer dies. I'm thinking, okay, $1,500 for a freezer. I will point out that only last month in January, our fridge died. And just to get our fridge fixed cost almost $2,000. Now, we couldn't, it was to replace that fridge was $3,500. So we obviously went with a $2,000 option. Um, and our freezer. So I was like, okay, all right, no problem. Tr jump online to try and find the replacement freezer. So our freezer is old. It's an old model and our freezer is integrated, which means it's built into the kitchen. So we have to replace it with the same one. The replacement one is five and a half thousand dollars. I'm like, fuck, that's an expensive freezer. Like, like, holy shit. Wait, number, and I'm like, where are we going to find this money? Because we've wiped our emergency money out. We've wiped out Tom's special savings. Like, what are we going to do? And so not only, we've had five major things basically can't go wrong in frugal February. And it's it's added up to a large amount of money. It's, it's been shocking. It's been upsetting. And um, I want to talk to you sort of about how we coped about this. And I did this in more detail in my podcast with Michael Thompson on how do we afford that. But um, I wonder, that's why I'm wondering why I don't think frugal February, I think I might be attracting the wrong type of energy with, with frugal February this year. I will admit that we had some beautiful things and this um, happened during fr fr frugal February, but there were more manifesting things rather than great savings. And this is really coming back to the authenticity of what I stand for, what I value, That's that abundance, that prosperity, that opportunity, that gratitude, that high vibration energy for good things in our lives. So here's a couple of good things that actually happened during frugal February. 
I had probably about four or five amazing business opportunities presented to me. Investment opportunities, um, passive income building opportunities, fun creative project opportunities. They were really, they're really cool. And I've said yes to all of them. Not sure how I'm going to pull all of them off for 2023, but I'm going to give, I accepted them with an open heart and um, an enthusiasm to make sure I give these jobs the best effort, the best effort and I guess passion and put my heart into these projects. So that was also really cool. That meant these are things that I kind of had on my vision board for manifestation. The other thing happened was um, this was actually a big one. We have this tree in our backyard. It's, it's an Australian native tree, and it's it doesn't look particularly healthy. And it was growing at an angle, and it was causing a, a brick wall in our backyard to fall down. And it had we had these major cracks through this large sandstone wall. And I had spoken to the council about five months ago, and I said to them, "I'm really worried about this tree. It's not healthy, and it's damaging this wall. It's at an angle. If the tree falls, it's going to land on the house." And the council came over and had a look, and they're like, "No." Nah, it's fine. And I, I was it, I, like six months later, I was looking going, this tree's not getting any healthier. And I'm really, really worried. And I got an engineer over and the engineer was like, yeah, that tree's going to crash on your daughter's bedroom. And I was like, oh my God, I got a horticulturist over and he's like, yep, you're in big trouble because if there's a lot of rain, that tree will completely slide and fall. And um, anyway, so I went back to the council. I took all these photos. I'm like, no, no, I'm really worried about this. And I got to the stage where I was like, we are going to have to basically, this tree is dangerous. If the council don't see this and agree with me that it's got to be removed, we're going to have to, I think, go take them, take a legal action against them because this is like I'm to the point where I was getting worried about the dogs and the kids in the backyard, particularly when it's windy. And I was to the point where I was almost looking up fines, like how much do you get for illegally removing a tree out of a, a backyard? And I, I'm not for doing things illegally, please make it. it was, but it was more me going... I don't know what to do here because the council won't listen to me. Anyway, the council agreed to come over and have a little look. And the guy got out of his car and he's like, you know, I remember coming here and he got, walked in and he was like, yeah, no, that's really dangerous. He's like, he turned to me and goes, that tree must be taken out. And I'm like, ah, phew. Okay. I don't need to get a lawyer involved. I don't need to look at like performing a criminal activity of getting a tree illegally taken out. Uh, he's like, and he was telling me, and I was like, yeah, this is what I've been worried about. He's like, no, I can see it's dangerous. He's like, yep, leave it with me. We'll, we will get this done. So that potentially was going to be a bit of a financial cost that we didn't have to worry about doing. So that's a blessing. I also got back um, some money from Cash Rewards. Uh, cash, I love Cash Rewards. I use Cash Rewards for the $1,000 project. Um, and they had a great offer with Bookings.com. So I was able to put our accommodation for Hong Kong through Cash Rewards. And I got, you know, I'm getting back, I think, up to $300 with them um, for our accommodation there. And you know, business is paying my business will help, and Tom's will help pay for that accommodation. So it's kind of like free money out of our business. Don't tell the ATO about that. But um, if you're someone who works in a job where you have to do a lot of the bookings for people, or you have to fly a lot and book your own accommodation for work, why don't you use cash rewards to make those bookings and and uh, airfares and accommodation and get you clip your ticket and get the cash back? You know, it's kind of a nice way of getting um, some money back. And look. You obviously should tell your employer what you're doing, that you're getting cash back on on their expenses. But why not? Like, these are these are cool things. The other thing that happened was my accountant emailed me, and originally I was getting no tax refund this year, which was disappointing. And then um, I remember that they'd forgotten to claim something. So I'm actually getting it back about $400. So that's really nice. And that money will come through during Manifesting March. So that's really nice. Now, I want to quickly tap into the, the bit of the resilience because um, I don't want to just tiptoe or dance over the fact of all these major expenses that came up for us during frugal February because it was frightening. It was crushing. It was, as I said, we felt defeated, very defeated, and we were sucking our thumbs going, oh my God, like this is so unfair. So I want to quickly just touch on this because I feel like, particularly at the moment, the interest rate rises and the cost of living and things that just come out of the blue, the expenses, dental, medical, um, uh, you know, stuff that, you know, I had a lot of people messaging me through Instagram saying that they had problems with their house with all the rain and membranes coming loose and them having to pay, you know, $30,000 to get a roof fixed and, and so forth. Like, I, I want to share a couple of things that helped us get through those expenses. And we're still going through those expenses. But first of all is um, we felt that we just let ourselves feel defeated. We're not going to suppress those feelings. Yeah, we felt conquered. We felt fearful, anxious, um, sad. Um, 
angry, blameful. Uh, we were really questioning what, how we got ourselves into this situation. Um, but we, the moment we did that, we, we released it because there is no point staying in that space and that place you know, of anger and of frustration and fear and anxiety and regret. Th that serves no good when you're trying to move forward financially. So the moment we, we accept that that's what we feel, but feelings aren't supposed to stay with us forever. So we release them and we also supported each other. So Tom would call me during the middle of the day going, honey, I can't believe our luck. This is what a disaster. I can't, like the more we try, the, the more setbacks we came to get. And then that would be my opportunity to go, look, let's focus on the good things here. Let's focus on the fact that we have a home. Like we're so lucky to have a roof above our heads. Let's be grateful for the fact that we have emergency money and that we're not having to dip into the mortgage to help pay for these expenses. Let's be grateful for the fact that we got onto this before a, a ceiling or a floor concaved, which could have been a, a realistic problem with the rotting beams. Uh, let's be grateful for the fact that no one's been hurt. Let's be grateful for the fact that we're catching this black mole before it gets even worse because we're uh, anyone who's experienced the damage from the rains knows how toxic and dangerous black mold is. And we had a wall that was two meters by one meter black mold. It was really, really toxic. I had to close off room and for six months and not let my kids near that room. So, and, and, and there, there'd be moments where it flipped. I, I would be like, what the hell is going on? Like, what is the universe trying to do us? This is so unfair. I can't believe it. And then Tom would then be go, you know, vice versa. And he'd be like, oh, honey, like, it is what it is. We need to, you know, focus on what we can do here and how we can get through this. And, you know, I can't believe our luck. I know, I know, but, you know, we'll be okay. It just means that we're not, you know, we're slightly, it's going to take us slightly longer to get back on track again. So to help get, you know, put things back into perspective and, and focus on really on what we, we, we're grateful for and the blessings behind this and supporting each other and knowing that we're a team and we'll pull together. And for people listening to this who are single and think, well, I don't have a partner, you might have a friend or you might have a counselor or you might have a family member that you can that can help support you, help hold your hand, help give you the strength and the encouragement to keep going when the hits keep coming. Because resilience is what's gonna get you through this. And and then what Tom and I did was we moved through those the emotional roller coaster of those fucking financial hits. And I, I apologize for swearing, but they, these have been big. These are not little handyman touch-up jobs. If you saw my Instagram, I had a scaffolding th that went from the foot, like through our, all the way to the ceiling. Um, and the scaffolding was on the inside as well as the outside, just to give you an insight as to the type of extensive work that our, the builders are doing. And so Tom and I are now down to the stage where we're brainstorming. We're coming up with lots of ideas and strategies and solutions as to how we are going to rebuild our emergency money as quickly as goddamn possible. But rebuilding our emergency money is our number one priority. Um, yes, I would love to say, you know, lump sum mortgage repayments are great, but no, right now we need, to, we're back at ground zero. We need to get back our emergency money because if we suffer another major emergency, we don't have anything to, to get us through it. And it will mean tip, dipping into our mortgage and, and having to redraw that money, which we definitely don't want to do. So um, yeah, move through the emotions, accept what it is, look for the, the blessings in disguise and brainstorm those solutions. And then finally, and I didn't talk about this in the podcast with Michael, but I, I should have is look for the lesson. Is there something the universe is trying to tell you when these things happen? Like I, I've had friends go through major medical traumas and I've spoken to them about it and they've got through the emotions and they're out kind of coming out the other side and they're like, and they've said to me, and a lot of people I think I feel will relate to this is they've said, it's like I manifested an accident or this illness in order for me to slow down. The universe was really trying to tell me to stop. And it took this big catastrophe for me to actually finally listen. And I feel like for, t for Tom and I, there's, there's a lesson in this for us. There is a lesson in us that we maybe need more emergency money. There is a lesson in us for us to learn to work together even more so as a team. There is a, and this is the big lesson I feel like, because if you follow me on Instagram, I actually put this out there the other day. I said, I feel like I'm at a crossroad with manifest, uh, with Frugal February, because I had these weird manifesting opportunities come up to me in Frugal February and my mindset was very much on frugal frugality. And for me, frugality, is not really what I stand for. I feel like being frugal comes from a place of scarcity, um, limitation, 
um, foregoing joyful activities and opportunities. And it, um, I, I just, I feel like it's, you can only go so far with being frugal. Whereas when you flip your mindset to abundance, prosperity, um, opportunity, excitement, um, there are so many great things you can actually do to, to build wealth and get ahead financially and achieve those goals and create greater sense of security for yourself. So this was really, really, I get, this was a big, I think, message or wisdom or lesson for me. So if you're listening to this and go, I know what you're talking about, Kanna. I want to share, this is what I think you should do, or this is, I want to share this insight with you, or this is my advice to you. Can you please shoot me through a DM about this podcast? And this is why I said this is like a little bit of a counseling session for me here, because I kind of feel like we've all outgrown Frugal February and that manifesting March really adds more value and serves other people. It's more meaningful. It's more effective. It's more powerful. Now, I want to just summarize manifesting March on this podcast and, and end with this because it's the 26th, it's Sunday the 26th of February. I've called it quits on Frugal February two days early because I am throwing in the towel. I've got frugal fatigue. I am fucking done with Frugal February. And I've got a year to think about whether I want to do it again next year. But I'm starting manifesting March early. Yep. Officially, it will start on the 1st of March, which is the Wednesday, I believe. And this is where I will be really looking at building my mindset, getting out of that yucky fruit, uh, frugalness and thinking about what I really want to achieve and build for manifesting March. And I can share this with you. I want to build, rebuild our, start building, rebuilding our emergency savings. I want to start rebuilding, um, uh, getting back, you know, back on top of obviously the mortgage and the house. Like I want to kind of manifest our home being put back together again, emergency money. I want to manifest new business opportunities. I want to manifest more savings. I want to manifest more investment opportunities. I want to manifest, uh, as I said, more passive income. Um, so what am I going to be doing to help this actually happen? Well, I'm going to be doing lots of visualization work, visualization where I see myself in the first person and the third person successfully achieving these things, uh, making progress, having discoveries, having connections with people, uh, seeing money in my bank account, seeing more money in my investment portfolio, seeing my passive income streams grow, having spontaneous random things, random acts of uh, manifestation and abundance happen, like random refunds um, that, that weren't planned for. I will also be putting together a strict ritual where I'll be doing this work every morning and every night. I'll also be working on my affirmations and I'll be making some fresh financial affirmations for everyone because I know you guys love listening to them in the morning. I'll also be opening myself up to signs, messages, words of wisdom. And of course I'm going to be doing, it comes with, I, I, this is my big thing is I won't just be meditating and manifesting money. I'll be getting out there and putting some cold, hard, uh, not cold, hard, work behind this i'll be looking for solutions i'll be hustling i'll be maybe may, i may have to make a few sacrifices along the way but i will be i'll be doing i'm going to be pushing um but i will also to bring in respect for gabby uh gabby bernstein when that pro that manifesting challenge i just completed i'll also be open to surrendering and letting the universe serve me what is best for me now for anyone that can hear my child screaming in the background please know i'm not ignoring her Tom has her. She's obviously having a tantrum and a meltdown. So um, don't think I'm neglecting uh, my child um, that might be might be picking up in the audio in the background. Um, all right, everyone. Um, for anyone that's done Frugal February, let me know how you went. Let me know how much you saved. Let me know if you think I need to keep going with Frugal February. This tradition is like seven years old. Um, is it something that stays or have we all outgrown it? Am I of more value and service to you by just focusing on abundance and manifestation and mindfulness? I want to hear from you. Now, I'm going to wrap this podcast up. I've just hit about to hit the 40 minute mark. Um, so I want to wish everyone a fantastic week. I, I hope you wrap up Frugal February with a great level of satisfaction and pride and that you are ready to join me and launch in with me for the magic of manifesting much. Thanks for listening, everyone.